The views and opinions expressed by participants in the following public affairs program do not necessarily reflect the position or beliefs of WDEF or its staff. This is Point of View, celebrating a world record-breaking 62 years of quality public affairs programs from the studios of WDEF News 12, Chattanooga. Welcome to this episode of Point of View. Thank you for joining us. My name is Vincent Ivan Phipps. I'm your co-host. It is said that FoodNetwork.com that the average person is going to consume 5,000 calories during one holiday meal. Our expert today to talk about some healthy holiday eating is a guest from Whole Foods, Mr. Jason Autry, who is the healthy eating educator for Whole Foods. Thank you for joining us, Jason. Thanks for having me out. Jason, what are your thoughts about how we can eat more healthy during the holidays? My thoughts are the same as they are all year round. In fact, someday I want people to stop being thankful for their health and just it'd be a given. Right? I hear you. Absolutely. You so I have it. four things that I tell people all the time. One the most important rule. Okay. These things are going to apply to anybody's diet, whether you're paleo or you're pescatarian, vegetarian, This covers vegan, everybody. Everybody, Got right? You. So my four pillars of health. Okay. Number one, whole foods. Oh. That means food that's in its natural state. Gotcha. These are whole foods right here. So uh, okay. Seasonal. So not just whole foods, but whole foods. Right. And gotcha. you can get them at whole foods, of gotcha. course. Okay. That's where we got the name. All right. right? What do we got here? Today we have uh, the aptly named winter squash. Okay. All of these are different varieties. We have delicata, acorn. I think this is a coboca squash. Okay. You know, classic butternut. These are great roasted stuff. Any way you want to try them. Whole foods number one. What's number two? We've also got some beets here. I love a nice root vegetable. Okay. Um, thing to remind about these is eat the greens. Eat the greens. The greens are good okay. for you too. What's number three? I brought chestnuts. On an open fire. Right. Gotcha. Or you can roast them in the oven instead of the open fire. It's less okay. dangerous that way. Gotcha. All right. right. And in my favorite part of the holiday season, as far as the fresh produce goes, the whole foods, right. is the fruit. So I've got some persimmons here. Okay. These are like honey inside. Wonderful. Right. I got okay. the pomegranates full of antioxidants. We've got different colors of oranges. I bet you didn't even know they came in different colors. I did. Well, that's the blood. We've got the blood orange. Okay. The blood orange. And then we have the Kara Kara pink navel. Wonderful. So orange, pink, red. And all those different colors are going to be different vitamins and minerals. Got you, Jason. Right. During the holidays, especially here in Chattanooga with the South, we're so inundated with cakes and pastries and pies. What are some healthy alternatives for the kids or for anybody that wants to eat sweets but still want to be healthy? Still wants to eat sweets? You got it. Well, let me show you my new sugar. Okay. This thing right here. All right. This is a date. That's the new sugar? Yes. Okay. This right here is a whole food plant source, full of fiber. Okay. It's also full of sugar. Now how would people sugar. eat those during the holidays? You can eat them straight like that. Okay. Or you can use them in some of your recipes. And this is one of the simple substitutions I like to use to make traditional dishes a little bit healthier. Okay, right? wonderful, all right. Good For example, okay. cranberry sauce. Okay. This is, a, this is a box of cranberry sauce. Okay. This has 120 calories per serving. Okay. My cranberry sauce is just as good, I promise. Right. It's only got 77 now, calories. Now, is this a dipping sauce? We eat chips with it? How would you enjoy this during the holidays? You can enjoy it as a side dish with your turkey and everything. Okay. You can uh, use it on, on a sandwich even. I made a cranberry okay. and peanut butter sandwich. Cranberry and peanut butter. Okay. Believe I guess me, it's, it's, it's a good. berry. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. But you, it's just a condiment. You, you spread it on toast. Anything you like. Gotcha. People right. serve cranberry sauce for the holidays. I serve mine completely raw and completely free of refined sugars. Now, these are foods that you wouldn't normally have for traditional holidays. How would a person find out more about how to incorporate these with their regular menus or meals? Well, the best way to do it is just be mindful. Gotcha. Follow my four pillars. Right. Being, eating whole foods, eating mostly plants, choose healthy fats, and try right. to get nutrient density into your meals. I gotcha. Now, if you want some resources, there's a whole plethora of books. There's libraries of books on right. how to eat vegetarian, vegan, and healthy. Okay. You can also go to WholeFoods.com, check out my Health Starts Here website, and I've got thousands of recipes right there. Wonderful. Now, Jason, I recognize these. These are potatoes. Those are sweet potatoes. Oh, man. Okay. Now, how would a person prepare these healthy for the holidays? Okay. The reason I picked this one is because one of the traditional dishes at my house that I've stopped eating right. is the candied yams. You stopped the candy yams? I had to stop Jason. the candy yams. So, what, so what's the alternative then? You know how much sugar's in the candy yam? Not enough. Well, there's none in the yam okay. other than natural sugar. Gotcha. But we put brown sugar and marshmallows all over it. So what I did today is I just took the sweet potatoes. Right. I want to get a wide variety, so I took four different colors. Again, did you know there were so many colors of food? I did not. I did not know so many Purple, colors. Purple, uh, Covington. Uh, there's even a white one in here. This one's white on the inside. Okay. And all I did was I seasoned these with some, some powdered ginger and some cinnamon and right. I roasted them in the oven. Well, so many people love to do the pies and the custards. 
how much could these be used to substitute for sweet potato pie or pecan pie? Absolutely, you could substitute these. But okay. see, at the holidays, I don't think I want to take away from anybody. Right. You try to take the pecan pie away from grandma, it's going to be a problem. Yeah, exactly. Gotcha. Right? gotcha. So what I try to do is make it a little healthier. Okay. The worst part of that pie is the crust. That's where the butter and all the refined mm. flours are. The stuff you go to first in the cobbler. Exactly. Gotcha. Right? gotcha. So I will skip the pecan pie because it's full of corn syrup and everything. Okay. A pumpkin pie would be a better alternative. Right. Now, neither one's a particularly healthy option. Gotcha. But if you eat a pumpkin pie, you're also getting some vitamins and minerals. It's a little bit healthier. And if you leave the crust on the plate, even better. Sounds good, Jason. And what do we have right down here? Uh, these are just, uh, I went around the store and I was like, if I was a vegan, right. which I almost am, I'm working towards it, what would I eat at the holidays? Now, if you would, explain to our viewers the difference between a vegan and a vegetarian. A vegetarian uh, doesn't eat animal products. Gotcha. A, ve or, or, or a vegetarian doesn't eat anything except vegetables. They might also eat eggs and things like that. I gotcha. A vegan does not eat any animal products whatsoever. So Some of them inclu include honey. Okay. They won't wear leather. Okay, I got you. So just totally restrictive. Yes. So if you're going to make food for others for the holidays, what are some of the things here that can make that easier? So these are some simple options and also, once again, little simple substitutions. Gotcha. For example, uh, we, if anybody's making soup, they're probably going to use some uh, chicken stock. Or, gotcha. I say just switch to the low sodium vegetable stock. Huh, vegetable stock. Exactly. Okay, now it's how much, much of a for difference you. in taste than, than the beef stock or the chicken stock compared to vegetable stock? Well, this one just tastes like vegetables. Okay. But once you've broken oh. your addiction to all those unhealthy animal products, you're going to love this anyway. Gotcha. And if you're using it in soup anyway, I really don't think the flavor profile is going to matter. Okay. But vegetable yeah. stock all the way. They can get this in your stores, correct? Absolutely. And where are they located, Jason? Uh, we're over on the North Shore. Okay. And we're open from 8 a.m. till 10 p.m. Wonderful. Uh, six days a week and then 9, 9 o'clock on Sundays when we close. What are the options if a person wanted to purchase any of these foods or already prepared meals as gifts? What would be their options to find you guys online and to your stores? Well, you can uh, shop online and actually order all kinds of things as well as completely done holiday meals right. cooked by our chefs. Um, and we even have some vegan options on there too. Wonderful. Um, then you can also just come by, and these are all really simple things that you just take and heat up. Like I've got the, the alternate to the turkey, right. which is a, a tofu. No, alternate to loaf. turkey. Is this tofu turkey? That is tofu turkey. Tofu turkey, okay. Now, how much of a difference, if I were to close my eyes and I eat grandma's turkey and I eat the Whole Foods tofu turkey, how much of a difference would I taste? I think there's going to be a big difference. Big difference? This is not a one-for-one -one substitution. Gotcha. This is a hearty main dish, though, for someone who's not going to consume animal products. Okay. Now, I like this one. It's pretty good. But even better, there's some out there that are made with nuts and mushrooms, and they're even more nutritious for you. But I think you'll find, uh, you bring this to a holiday feast, even with the turkey there, right. and, and you, you trick people into tasting a little bit of it. Right. Because that's not turkey, but it sure is good. <laughs> Excellent. And the last thing I think we have here is some organic sour wheat crackers. Okay? Yes. It's a lot of folks do little, little cheese trays and things. So one way you can soup up your cheese tray to be a little bit healthier is just serve some whole grain crackers. And that's another rule of thumb. Look for whole grains instead of the, the bleached processed flours. Excellent. They're going to be much healthier for you. And anytime you can substitute, see I did this, we got a multi-grain stuffing. Instead of using white bread, use a multi-grain. Ah, excellent. Jason, this has been outstanding. I know our viewers are educated and hopefully informed with all these delicious foods. Thank you, Jason, from Whole Foods, the healthy eating educator. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Join us on our next segment. We're going to find out if you're still in the Chattanooga area during the holidays, you're going to find out all the wonderful things there to do on our next segment on Point of View. I've got a job to do today. I have got a job to do today. Have a good first day at work, Mom. Your donations to Goodwill fund job training programs right in your community. Feels good to start fresh, right? Sure does. And like that, you're a job creator. Welcome back to Point of View. I'm Nyetta Kinsell. Recently, I was at an attraction here locally, and I bumped into some people from the north that were here for a two-day getaway. However, it turned into a five-day when they saw so many attractions. Here to talk to us about holiday travel and tourism is Candace Davis from the Chattanooga Visitors Bureau. 
Welcome. Thank I'm so you. happy that you're here. Thank you. Me too. <laughs> so we're right in the midst of the holiday season mm -hmm. and you know there's always a little bit of downtime. So, mm -hmm. You know what can we do? Yeah well you know the holidays are a great time. You get a little time away from work, your family comes in, so there's a lot of opportunities for you to really spend some quality time together and you know uh, we've got some great holiday events you don't want to miss. Enchanted Garden of Lights at Rock City Gardens, Southern Bell Riverboat Cruises, the Tennessee Valley Railroad, they have some train trips to the North Pole. And these are holiday musts. Yes, correct, yes. yes. Um, Santa Divers at the Aquarium, you know, so there's a really great castle exhibit that will actually be here through the, or past the holidays at the Creative Discovery Museum. So there's definitely some really fun things you can get out. Oh, the ice skating rink. I was going to say that you that? can't yeah, forget the ice skating rink. <laughs> you know, so there's a lot of great things that you can do. But again, like, you know, the, the holidays are so crazy and you're and running from place to place. Yes, and sometimes you want to get people out of the house. Yes, They've been exactly. actually cooped up, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. uh, we have been named the best outdoor city. Um, why is that? Mm -hmm. Well, um, about, let's see, in 2011, we were named the best town ever by Outside Magazine, and then we received that designation again last year, and that's based on readers' votes. And, you know, the, the thing is about Chattanooga, you were surrounded by these beautiful mountains. We run, we sit right on the Tennessee River. There's so many outdoor opportunities. But not only that, we have so many other things that people love, just kind of those intangibles, that southern hospitality, the um, just the, the ease of everything downtown, how vibrant the city is, and then just all the things that you can do with in, you know just the downtown area then you have Lookout Mountain uh, a little bit further out where the railroad is Lake Winnie so there's so many things you can do and then you know it's easily accessible so people love that and that's you know one of those reasons we were best town ever we win some of these different designations before we get a little further into that how many tourists come to the Chattanooga mm -hmm. area each year we get about three and a half million visitors wow. to Chattanooga and I recently did read that we generate over a billion dollars mm -hmm. just from tourism here in our city. Yeah, so the visitors that come to Chattanooga, they're spending money at our hotels, at our restaurants, gas stations, all of that. So the, the U.S. travel actually takes all those numbers and then provides us back what people are spending in Hamilton County. And this year, this last year, we did bump up to over a billion dollars, which has just been exciting for this industry. Does you that know. help us as taxpayers? Absolutely. There's a lot of that money that goes directly back into the community. and one of the things you know that if you own a home in Hamilton County because of tourism you're saving $500 a year just so, for that. Let's talk about the locals. <laughs> You know, we often live in the area so we mm -hmm. don't benefit from those touristic spots or, or mm -hmm. attractions. What if you, you're here, you know, on a staycation or mm -hmm. you have people that you want to get the kids out of the house? Yeah. What do you do there? Well, you know, um, Chattanooga, again, has all this stuff. If you do live here, I do hear people all the time that say, you know, there's nothing going on. What do I do? What can I do? And, you know, we've got some great resources, our website specifically, ChattanoogaFund.com, but there's so much happening in the city, and you can even take it by some of those different districts. Give me a couple for the kids. Okay, for definitely Chattanooga is a family-friendly destination. So you've got the Creative Discovery Museum. You have Rock City, the Aquarium. You've got, um, you know, the Downtown Riverfront, the Passage, Coolidge Park. Park, uh, Chattanooga Lookouts, you know, it just goes on and on. Tennessee Valley Railroad, Southern Bell Riverboat, you can keep going about all these great How about couple, couples mm -hmm. for couples? Yeah. And then, you know, all those things you can do without kids, too, which is really great, except for the Creative Discovery Museum. You kind of want to have some kids there. But, uh, <laughs> but you know, all <laughs> that might be a little things, weird, yeah. right? Yeah. And then, you know, just the last couple of years, we've really amped up our um, live music and entertainment scene. And that's one thing that a lot of people without kids, you know, can go to because they kind of We have, have a lot 21. of venues for. Mm -hmm live music. Um, I know Track 29 is mm -hmm. one of them. We have a few yeah. others. Yeah, Revelry Room, those are both down at the Choo Choo. Then you also have the Comedy Catch. Okay. And, you know, just some tips. Sign up for some of these um, these venue emails and they, they, they're they giving away free tickets and stuff like that all the time. So it's a great way to just kind of, um, you know, have another reason to go to these places. <laughs> Talk to me about nightlife. Mm -hmm. A lot of people want to just get away for the evening. Mm -hmm. What are options for that? Yeah, well downtown we have a variety of different restaurants. Now we have over 15 that play live music. So you can get dinner and a show. You can go to these different places again like the Comedy Catch or the live music. Walk around, uh, you know, downtown just along the riverfront, the North Shore. You've got a variety of different restaurants and bars that are open. What if you want to get a, away from the downtown mm -hmm. area or even visit some unseen areas or uncommon destinations in mm -hmm. our area? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, you can go out to Hamilton Place. It's so close to downtown. There's a variety of different things there. Lookout Mountain. 
Um, so, you know, just within 15, 20 minutes of downtown, mm -hmm. there's definitely a lot of things that you can do. We have a lot of history here in mm -hmm. our city, mm -hmm. and um, we have a lot of parks here in our city. Mm -hmm. What do you think are the top three parks and historical areas? Oh, um, you know, one of our biggest historical sites, the Chickamauga Chattanooga National Military Park. And, that's and where actually, is that? That's made up in a couple different locations. So you've got Point Park on top of Lookout Mountain. Okay. So if you're up at the top of the Incline Railway, which the Incline is also a great piece of our history. <laughs> and um, then the second park is down in Chickamauga, Georgia. So that's where the battle of Chickamauga was fought. So you've got different battles that were fought in those places, but because of um, our mountains and our river, we had all these strategic locations and okay. going from one to the other. So we actually have a really great Civil War trails um, uh, trail that you can look up some of those different sites and stuff too. Other things like the Tennessee Valley Railroad, they're, they're a working museum. It is a museum. You know, they're they're focusing on the, the restoration of train cars, but they also go and take these trips every day. So you get to experience a little bit more of it. You've got the Bessie Smith Cultural Center downtown. You know, they got, have a great African American mm, museum. Absolutely. So there's a lot of different ways that you can experience some of that culture. There's um, the Hunter Museum of American Art. You know, they house the largest collection of American art in the South. So there's a lot of just great pieces there. They've got some great temporary exhibits, and that's also a great place to take kids too. They've got some, you know, a great artist notebook and some different things that just kind of um, add to that experience. Now it's a bit chilly to be out on the water right now. Yes. <laughs> However, for those those people that want to come back or mm -hmm. live here. Mm -hmm. Tell me about some water attractions. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, being on the river too, when we when we um, spent all that money to revitalize the riverfront, one of the mm -hmm. things was we didn't have that access to the river. And now you've got several boating options from the Tennessee Aquarium's River Gorge Explorer, Southern Bell River Boat, um, Chattanooga Cycle Boats, to actually getting on the water in a kayak or a canoe, stand up paddleboard. You can rent those downtown. So there's a lot of ways to get on the water there. But then, you know, outside of the city, you've got North and, Chick North and South Chickamauga Creeks, which are great places to go out. And then 45 minutes away, you have whitewater rafting, you know, on the Ocoee River. Now, for those people that did not take notes on every <laughs> every location that just you just said, <laughs> um, what is the best way to mm -hmm. see a list of all these great places? Mm -hmm. You can go to our website, ChattanoogaFun.com, and we have um, stuff broken up based on where you want to stay, where you want to eat, what to do. We've got a variety of different itineraries too. So perfect. Thank you so much for You're visiting welcome. with us yeah, on today. Absolutely. Thank you for tuning in and please come back to see our Food Network star here on Point of View. You make me wear my bike helmet. You taught me never to run with scissors. And to follow the swimming rules. You tell me to stay away from drugs. To always buckle my seatbelt. So why do you keep a loaded gun in your drawer? How safe is that? You ask them to follow some safety rules, now they're asking you. In fact, they're counting on you. Never let your gun get into the wrong hands. Remember, always lock it up. Visit ncpc.org. So I've come up with the family emergency plan. Great. What is it? It's difficult to talk about, so I'm not telling you. How will we know what to do? You won't. I'm so glad I won't have to remember anything. And me too. Thanks for this, sweetie. Talk to your kids about who to call, where to meet, what to pack. Visit ready.gov kids for tips and information. Hello and thank you for joining us on this segment of Point of View. Today it's the holiday season and we have Chef Gennard Wells in the house along with his beautiful wife, Keena Wells. Thank you guys for joining us today. Thank you thank for having you. us. Now, you know it's always a pleasure when I come to Chattanooga, especially around the holidays. Especially season. on Point of View around the holidays. Oh, absolutely. Right? absolutely. All right. So, <laughs> Now, you guys are the epitome of get it done, get it done quick, and make time. Make the family time work. So today, we're talking about how in the world do we make time for a family in the kitchen? And you said, what are we going to make today? Uh, sweet treats, especially when we're talking about family. That's one of the biggest mm -hmm. things that we know. We're having a big family, a lot of kids, they love sweets. Yes. But the key is, it's things that centered around them that they may like. And, and during the season, you know, who don't like cookies? Yes. Who don't like hot chocolate? We do clean up. And who has little time, That's basically? That's right. That well, would be me. I know you guys are flying around the country, so yes. I want to figure out how do you make time for your beautiful kids, and this is how you do it. Now, Keena, you already made some cookies for us, right? I have. And you tell me this is your thing in the house. You make cookies that are decorations, right? Yes. Well, I'm going to steal that from you this year because we got to do it. But let's talk about what we're making here. We are making a batch of sugar cookie ornaments. Ornaments. So, yes. 
probably nothing new for some, but yeah. I think it's always a fun treat for my kids. Mm -hmm. And for me, it saves time, yes. saves money. Yes. They get to eat, and we get to decorate. And decorate the tree at the same yes, time, at the same right? Time. Now, most people say the chef's coming to town. We're going to make something huge. But I like that you can scale down and do the small stuff, too. So let's show the viewers what we're going to make today. Yes. Um, so what we have here, I've already taken the liberty for time's sake. Thank we're you. baking some sugar cookies. You can just yes. take some plain sugar cookies, okay. make some plain sugar cookies. And what you want to do is get you a little icing. Okay. It's mm -hmm. easy for my kids to get the icing that's already. I'm going to grab one of those yes. chefs. Thank you. Yeah, exactly. Because already see, the, in a bag. The cool part is yes. they like to play in with yes. it. And by having your own little small tubes of ice and different things, everybody can play a yes. part in yes. it and not make a mess. And then we have so many that so yeah, you got to bring it on. They're free spirited, so we say yeah. decorate. You just okay. type, get get what exactly you want on right. there. What and I then let you them just oh, give it on, any really? kind yes. of designs. I like it to be designs. neat, but you I, know what? I, that I, has I, a pretty look I'm to being, it. I'm being the I love little. It. I'm being the little kid today because this okay. is how my kids like in my it. household do me while I'm in the middle of doing. I like it. <laughs> so now, but you also take these and put them on the tree, right? So yes. Great. I love it. So what do you need to do that? Just the what do you got cooking the cookies there with? I have cookies. Well, here's the thing. Nice. We have a lot of kids. Everybody know that. It's no secret nowadays. How many? How many kids? We have seven still in the household and a GG as well. So we nice. got a grandbaby too. Yeah. So I make small bites. So I, like I take it. the bigger cookie, and you can take any type of cookie cutter. You can take any type of round. Mm -hmm. You can just cut you a nice little round segment Love out it. of that cookie. Push that bad boy out. Go ahead and hand that one to me. You I got like some it. smaller treats. That I way, like it's that. more to go around. I like and you know the, the best thing about the smaller treats. You can eat them and you ain't got to worry about as many calories. You know, with me being a big guy, <laughs> Less I, I feel chef, if I, I put down it. six of those I get small it. ones, then I'm not taking Strategies, me much. Yes. <laughs> yes. So now, Chef, you have a great drink here. Yes, now, yes. Now, when you told me I'm bringing some hot cocoa, marshmallows, and something else, I said, well, what's he trying to make in a marshmallow yeah, mar and, and, margarita and, glass? And this, th this is... After we finish making the sweet treats for the mm -hmm. kids, this is something that me and Keenan like to wind down and make ourselves. Okay. And normally we typically just get us some boiling water. The best water to use actually mm -hmm. for it is the Voss distilled water, okay. which it would typically make your cocoa taste more refreshing. Okay. But what I like to do is take those same cookies after we've made all of our cocoa and of course I already got and you me a just nice put two packs of cocoa. That's it, two packs of cocoa Kena, per this cup is easy. of water. This is easy. The cool thing is is what I like to drink when we sip them. You know, mm -hmm. some people sip eggnog. With me, mm -hmm. I'm a cocoa drinker. So what we do is we go ahead and scale it in there. I can see scale my Scale it in your martini glass. Yeah. And then the cool thing is because it's non-alcoholic, even though it's in a martini glass, mm -hmm. the kids typically feel like they, they're grown up because they get to sip it if some of them are still woke. Mm -hmm. Then I like to take my marshmallows, and as you can see, I get my hands in these now, right here. I've got to here. get one of those. You floaties, know floaties, floaties. Yes, get one. get one, get one. Make them great. taste it too. We and then them. the cool nice. part about it is those same cookies mm -hmm. that Kena make. I like to overindulge, and I like to have my cookie that I finish. I'm gonna try to eat one of these, of but I don't think I can. Exactly. See, that's the whole cool part about yeah. it. Exactly. Take it it's out. It's about being messy. Exactly. And, being fun. and the cool I thing like with it. marshmallows is when you when you do them the way I do them by actually letting them pre-soak mm -hmm. in the cocoa mm -hmm. and melt in your mouth, not in your hands. I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> so has all the good. Do you guys do this with the whole family around? Because it is. We want the viewers to know that you don't have to have a big budget, right? Yes. yes. You don't have to be the whales flying around, team whales around the country. But anyone can make anything small. But it really has a big impact on the family. Absolutely, I call it balling on a budget. Once we hold cross on, over hold on, hold on. what is that again? It's balling on a budget. Balling on a budget. Yes. I like it. I said you want presents under the tree. We're gonna compromise on how much we use to I decorate. Love it. Like I said, they I can use it. small bites. They can decorate and eat at the same time. I kill two birds with one stone. Sure. So one thing that I like about Team Wells. You had the four F's that you focus on, right? Mm -hmm. And again, we're all talking about family and fun, but what are those four F's again for our viewers? Because I kind of think it's a nice little, it's a nice little touch. It's faith, family, food, and fun. And those are our, our pivotal points, and those are one of the things. Stir this? Are we good? Is it is it? good. Just nice. let it simmer and go. Okay. Those, those are one of the coolest things uh, when I talk about faith, family, food, and fun. As mm -hmm. we were building a career, and focusing on things that we wanted to achieve in life, mm -hmm. I wanted I wanted to make sure that no matter 
how big I may have gotten in life, mm -hmm. that I kept everything centered around the co core values I of like life, that. which was my family, mm -hmm. which was having fun, and just my love for food as a mm -hmm. whole. And just so happened, me, me keeping those values ended up making me one of the biggest celebrities that's growing today well, in the food industry. Well, that's what people love about Chef Wells and Kena. You're like us. You're kind of normal. The stardom hasn't, you know, gotten to you, but this right here brings it back home to the family. Absolutely. So now, I know there's a variation of this drink. <laughs> Am I right? There is. There's but so many. But we are talking about the holiday, so we love what you've brought today. But what is the variation for those adults who like to get out and have a good <laughs> Time again. What do we say? Something on a budget. What do we say? We are balling on a budget. So if we're balling on a budget, how do we make a variation of that for the adults? Okay, we got several variations. You got your cocoa. Where you then what you can do is you can infuse white chocolate in it. Okay. Kick it up a notch. But then if you're looking to have a nice nightcap, mm -hmm. the best thing to add into it is some nice Ciroc. Nice. You add Ciroc into it. Then that's I'm, really the after-after time. I'm gonna after get those little frame. goodies that Keena's using because she's kind of beating me on these cookies. Uh -huh. Yeah, she. You know, this this is her I, this is her I ball know. field when it comes to sweets, and this is where like she likes it. to play. And normally, I just kind of just stand back in the kitchen and just watch Keena, and just let her enjoy Keena, I don't know that herself. I believe that one at all. Uh, Does he ever stand back no, in the kitchen? No, he comes in and he's like, "Why did you use red?" Yes. Why, why did you use blue? I'm like, because it's my dish. And it's, I do what I want. And do you That's see right. what you what Donna just did right here? Actually, what you've just formed is what we would tell the kids as a regular old Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. You know, and you I definitely love it. need to show Hang the Hang on, we gotta show the right viewers. Here. I'm proud. You see? Yes, you did. Nice. So I it's like all it. about creating a picture yes. with your plate. And that's what my kids it. are intrigued by. They I like to it. get in there and they mm -hmm. like to feel like they're creating something. Well, guess what I just created? The plate is the platform. So look what I just did. Guess what we have now? Snowman. Snowman. Sure? The snowman. See, yeah. I get look, this. There you go. This. That's what yeah. we're talking about. I like it. Okay, well. We could have you guys on here forever and still not talk enough, but thank you for coming today. Our viewers love you. We'll have you back. So join us on the next Point of View, 2016 in review, an epic year, a lot happening. Closed captioning provided by the following. Funding for this program is brought to you by Barnett & Company, specializing in tax-efficient strategies for the preservation and distribution of family wealth offering continuous investment management with a focus on long-term strategies. Areas of service include investment, estate, education, and retirement planning. Barnett & Company, the power of compound returns over time. More information can be found on the web at barnettandcompany.com.